Well, there are nearly 3,000 cases of monkeypox in California, and almost 1,000 of them are here in L.A. County. Right now, vaccinations are limited because there just aren't enough doses. Joining us right now to talk about this is Dr. Anjali Campin from Providence St. Joseph Hospital. Good evening, doctor. Thank you for joining us. Right now, the latest numbers show in L.A. County monkeypox cases doubled in the last two weeks. What are you seeing in the ER? So I've actually seen a handful of cases myself in the emergency department. Um, it's not an easy thing to diagnose. Even I, when I saw the patients, was questionable whether it was monkeypox, did the swab, and uh, waited for the results to come back and found out, yes, it was monkeypox. So it is out there. We are seeing it. Um, yeah. Doctor, I do want to touch on something that you just mentioned before we get to our next question here. Uh, the fact that uh, it, it can be a little hard to diagnose. Mm -hmm. So what should people be looking out for? What are those first signs that maybe people aren't aware of that may correlate with getting tested for monkeypox? So what we are seeing with monkeypox is the combination of a rash with a flu-like illness. So feeling fatigued, body aches, fever, but then also a rash. And the rash is anything from little uh, blisters to pimple-like lesions. Uh, the majority of cases is a, a lot of lesions around the point of contact where you came in contact with it. But some people simply have one lesion on each extremity. And that was one of the ones that I was questioning whether it was monkeypox, and it was. So it's the combination of a rash mm -hmm. with this flu like illness. And it's entirely possible that people might have it, right? And not even know they have it. So isn't that complicating everything further and leading to this continued spread we're seeing? It is. And in this day and age of, you know, monkeypox, but also COVID. If you are feeling sick, if you have a fever, body aches, fatigue, stay home. Don't put other people at risk. So I, that's the bottom line. Yeah, we've been saying it um, through the pandemic. And again, here in this case, I do want to talk about the vaccine supply. We know it is still stretched. We know the federal government authorized a new method to administer those shots. But how does this new method work and will it help with stretching that supply that we need? So before the vaccine came in a single vial that was administered to one patient, it was hypothesized that you could take a smaller amount, one fifth of that, and inject it intradermally, which means just under the skin, and get a similar response. Um, studies have yet to be done, but that is the way it is being uh, administered now in order to stretch the vaccine and uh, it seems to be effective. The UK is seeing a drop in cases because they started vaccinating uh, at-risk populations before the US did. Well, uh, health officials have made changes to how long someone should actually isolate if they believe they have it. What's the latest information you have and how long should someone stay home? Well, because this is all still very new, um, there's no hard and fast rules. What I would suggest is you need to stay home until your rash is completely healed because this is a disease that is spread skin to skin contact and not by casual contact, not by just rubbing against someone or going to the gym or trying on clothes that someone else has tried on. This is direct, intimate, long-term skin to skin contact. So when the, when the rash has completely healed is when you can stop quarantining. And sometimes that is up to three, sometimes four weeks. And we understand that rash can be um, very severe and, and it can really hurt for many people. Um, so we do appreciate your time, Dr. Campin. As always, thanks for joining us tonight. You're very welcome.